because they were on kinescope and tape did not come in until 1954. Right. And this is 48, 49, and all through the 50s, up to 54. And uh, that kinescope, the way it's worked, they wet gate it. It's a, uh, a, a little uh, something they put on it, and, and they use sonar, and it takes out the all uh, the antiquities of the uh, of the uh, kinescope and the blurs, and of course they were away for 40 years, and these haven't been seen in 40 years, so the, I couldn't rerun them. But how well now, in other words, when, when, when I watch this, and I'll watch this over the weekend, I will see it as a kinescope? No, I will no, you won't see this kinescope. In other words, this is going to look like tape. Wow. Here's what we did. We uh, cleaned, had them all cleaned up, quite expensive, but it was worth it, and had them all cleaned up and then transferred to tape. Same now, process as the honeymooners? No, it's a different process, but if you can tell the difference, or any of your listeners or anybody around the United States can tell the difference between this process that we used and the tapes that are being shown today, I'll, wow. give, them, I'll give them a million dollars. Kodak uh, was responsible for it? They're the ones that did it? No, uh, I, I, I produced it and directed with Buddy Arnold. But I mean, Kodak technology. Well, they're, they're, they're distributing them. Yeah. I and see that. Kod Eastman Kodak Company is the distributor. Up in Rochester. Yeah. I've heard of them. Milton You're Smith. allowed to use a 1 800 number in this show? Yeah. Well, if Give anybody to wants to. Uh, How much uh, is this series? That, uh, that, there's uh, three of them in there. That's fantastic. They're over an hour apiece. And one of the. Well, I don't know how great this is to anyone, but I am the host for my own uh, video the way I am today. So you greet me and tell me what I'm going to say? Yes, see. and we also do different forms of How comedy. How much is this package? When I get through, will you just <laughs> you have to do something else? You've no, got to leave how here. much is the package? The package I'm excited is forty nine ninety five, and there's it's also a, a bonus that goes with it, and that is a wonderful tape, an audio tape, they play in the cars, and it's called uh, uh, Wonderful uh, Memories of, of Show Business, Highlights of Show Business. Wow, and forty nine ninety five. What's the eight hundred number? The eight hundred number. It's in Rochester, I guess. It must be one eight hundred three. Read that, will you? I can't see my I, my eyes are bad. I keep looking right, for I one got thing. It here. Money. You are. Right. <laughs> it's one eight hundred three three one six eight three nine. That's this is a three package video of the best of early television. There was nobody who did it better than Uncle Milty. 1-800-331-6839, or you can write Kodak Video Programs in Rochester, New York. The uh, complete program is called The Second Time Around, and it deals, uh, one is titled Carnival of Comedy, one The Funny Fifties, and one Legends, starring and if you, Uncle If you want to open that, just a minute, and just let him slip out, tell the audience, if you will, Who's on the different ones? Uh -huh. You will see people like Nat King Cole, Steve Allen, Frank Sinatra, Martha Ray, Lon Chaney Jr., Basil Rathbone, Ben Blue, Ann Jeffries, Elvis Presley, Bob Hope, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, Jack Benny, Red Skelton, Phil Silvers, Cole Porter, Jackie Gleason, Ed Sullivan, Rochester. Now, uh, Martin and Lewis, by the way, as you said, that they made their debut, that was in 1949. And they were absolutely hilarious. You'll relive Tuesday night again with this. What a great idea. You want to talk to Uncle Milty? We'll be going to phone calls. This is the Larry King Show. Back after these messages. We were just talking about something. When you get this tape, Cole Porter. On I never saw a Cole Porter on television. Uh, except on Burl. Uh, this is a three-tape set for forty nine ninety five. It's in all the video stores. Kodak put it together. It's uh, Burl's own collection of his Tuesday night show which was emptiness in America. It's hard to explain this to people. But Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, in America, bizarreness occurred. No one was in the streets. <laughs> Movie theaters closed down on Tuesday night, and everyone, we all didn't have television sets, we would go to our friend. We would go to, I went to Herbie's house. He was the only one with television. Oh, Herbie. You had a Herbie. We all had a Herbie. Everybody had an Irving and That's a Herbie. Herbie and a Herbie had a television. And we got our television. And we were there and we would turn it on for Tuesday night. And these men would come out. And we are the men of Texaco. We work from Maine to Mexico. There's nothing like this Texaco of ours. Were you one of the T men? Tonight they'd have an hour full, a bow full of. Shower full of stars. Shower full of stars. T t tonight, tonight with Texaco we men. 
Tomorrow, Tonight we may be showmen. Tomorrow, tomorrow we'll, we'll be servicing your cars. And now... I pump the gas. I, I pump the, the gas. I, and now, Uncle Realty. That's right. I come out in the crazy costumes. Gorillas. And we have women. a montage there of me with the crazy costumes. We have a montage of me dancing. Everybody took on Burl. All the other networks put on people opposite him at 8 o'clock on Tuesday night. Milton Burl sold more television sets than any person ever. And now to have this collection. Oh, boy. What a gift. It is really a wonderful... You know, yesterday I was in New York and we did... I was in the store uh, on 49th Street and Broadway, the RKO uh, video store, and I was signing autographs, making an appearance there, and it was raining in New York, and we had about a thousand people there. I was amazed. They sold them all out. My hand got tired, but I didn't care. And a woman walked over to me. It must have been about 90 or 89. And she said, hello, Uncle Moti. I love you. And she kissed me. And she said, you know, I've been watching you ever since I was a little girl. I said, will you get out of here, lady? <laughs> will we ever see this on television? No. Right, right not? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, this is uh, private for the uh, Just the video. video. Yeah. Hey, maybe in the, in the future... You know, this uh, may be shown on television, but right now, for the next did, five did, did years... Did Cole Porter play piano? Did he sing? Oh, what did he do? No, Cole Porter, on the show, when I introduced him, he w- it was the first time he ever made an appearance on television on any show, and thank goodness I had him. And we talked about his songs and the shows that he wrote, and uh, he was very charming. Then we did a tribute to Cole Porter, and we had, oh, the greatest uh, people singing Porter songs, from Merman to Tony Martin singing Begin the Begin, and it's all on the tape. Milton Burrow's our guest. If you want to talk to Uncle Milty, 703-685-2177, if you want to order the tape for forty nine ninety five. It's 1-800-331-6839 or at any video store. We'll be back with your phone calls for my man, Uncle Milton Burrow. Thank you. After these messages. Our Hi. guest is one of my favorite people, Uncle Milty Burrow. Kodak has put out this extraordinary private collection of Tuesday Night in America. We're ready to go to your phone calls for Uncle Milty, Madison, Wisconsin. Hello. Hi. Boy, would my dad have been thrilled to have me talk to Milton Burrow. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, a couple things. First of all, um, other than yourself, of course, Mr. Burrow, um, who would be your favorite male comedian? Who made you laugh the most, Milton? Uh, I'd say, I don't think you remember him. I don't know how old you are. A man by the name of Willie Howard. Yeah, well, how funny was he? Oh, he was hysterical. Hysterical. Willie Howard... Really made me laugh. He and his brother Eugene, Eugene was there as a straight man. He was like a stick of wood, but Willie Howard was hilarious. Baltimore. Uh, Uncle Melty, when I think about the stars of the 50s, you, Lucy, Sid Caesar, Kovacs, Burns and Allen, Gleason and Durante, it just gives me the chills. Yeah, me too. But well, well, here's my one question. I, yep. I've got to know more about it's a mad, 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 mad world. What do you want to know? How did you all get along in that movie? Was there a lot of ad-libbing? Was it fun? No. No ad living with Stanley Kramer. <laughs> oh, no. It was work. It, it was terribly hard. We, it took us eight months to make that picture. And I've got to say one, one remark here about It's a Mad Mad World. It's a, it's a standard. It'll be an epic that will always be remembered. Uh, that picture at that time in 1961 or two only cost $11 million to make with $3 million on the side for publicity. Now, with the progress that the, and the economy today, that picture with all the stars would cost $200 million to make. And I don't know, I don't know how we could do it. Spencer Tracy. Remember Durante kicks the bucket. That's that oh, a movie over. Oh, I remember. He kicked well. the bucket. That's right. Boston with Milton Berle. Hello. Hi, Milton. This is Meredith. I took you on your uh, book tour. Oh, yes. Hi, Meredith. How are you? Fine. You mean mean the B.S. I Love You book? Yes, that's right. Yeah, it went very well. It just came out in paperback. Good yeah. book. Oh, are you going to take a, uh, are you coming to Boston on this tour now? No, I don't think I'll be able to. I may reach there in about, I don't know, I, it's not scheduled yet because I have some appearances to do on the West Coast. Oh. But it's good. That I'm happy that you called, Meredith. Thank you so much. To talk to you. Thank, Thank you. you. With Uncle Milty, Falls Church, Virginia. Hello. 
Thank you, Larry King, for providing this. Uncle Milty, we love you. Thank you very much. Uh, I saw you on TV some time ago, not during your show, but on a special where you had the Nairobi Trio. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> How can I find a copy of this? It was the most phenomenal <laughs> bit of comedy I've ever seen. Well, I'll tell you who owns that, and that's Ernie Kovacs, uh, widow, uh, Edie Adams. And if, if you can write to her, write to me. Just write to Milton Berle, uh, Beverly Hills. I'll get it. And I'll get in touch with Edie and give her a note. Maybe she can send you. What giants in that era? Huh? Kovacs. Oh, oh boy. Ernie Kovacs. What a genius. 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 Oh what comedy in the 50s we had in this country? Washington for Milton Berle. Hello. Uh, uh, hello, Larry. How are you uh, this morning? Uh, uh, is that Uncle Milty? Yeah, I'm right here, pal. Uh, okay, I'm 44 years old, uh, Mr. Burrell, so I'm a child of the 50s, and uh, it's very, very easy to see why that was the golden age of TV. Uh, the other uh, uh, man there uh, did mention Sid Caesar and Ernie Kovacs, and of course, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a Lucille Ball. There were so many great dramas and comedies and everything, but I remember... Uh, What's the question, sir? Okay, that, uh, uh, who was the gentleman that used to come out and do makeup, and then, of course, the famous Texaco theme song? And uh, Well, the te theme song Larry just sang, We Are the Men of Texaco. Fella hit me makeup, with makeup. Yeah. Well, we had different guys do it. And in, makeup! And in this uh, video, you will see different stars hit me with a powder puff. You, you dirty... Oh, I remember and, that. And uh, shoot Louis. What was it, the gun? There was a gun bit. Oh, the oh. gun... There was a, there was a, so, yeah. which one? What am I thinking of? A continuing bit every week. Oh, well, raise those hands, oh, Louis. Yeah. Okay. Royer's Fork, Pennsylvania. Hello. Good morning, Uncle Milty. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I stayed up to listen to you. I are, good you move. are you the one? Thank <laughs> you. Oh, uh, I, I was uh, I'm a little bit younger than Larry, but I remember you, and I grew up with you and Sid Caesar and Imogene Coca. Right, sir. Uh, your question? Uh, yes, uh, you know, I, w I was going to go. I, I'm writing some poetry, and I found out you're a poet, and I couldn't get to that the convention. There was a oh, you mean in Vegas? Vegas. Yeah. Yes, yes. How well, I'm known as Milton the poet. Go ahead. Milton the poet. How did you get into poetry? When I started, I think I was about 13. Yeah. By the way, you know, a lot of people forget Milton Berle had one of the funniest radio shows in history. Your radio show, you know, I still remember that show. Your brother Frank. The, the bits with Frank Burrell. Remember that? Oh. I said, I have a brother, Frank, that uh, won't work any week that has a Friday in it. <laughs> That's how superstitious he right. is. He sold, uh, he was a concessionaire at the ballpark once. And he yep, he was. He was back in pennies, right? Yeah, you know who wrote that show? May he rest in peace. Nat Hyken. Not bad. And Neil Simon and his brother Danny. They were the writers on that show. Milton Burrell's our guest. The collection is from Kodak. It's a collection of legends, the funny 50s carnival of comedy, all called the second time around. Milton Berle, Tuesday night in America. We have a break for news headlines, and we'll be back with more phone calls. We'll be repeating the 800 number, or you can buy it at your video store. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Uncle Milty, earlier Oral Hirschheiser, tomorrow night saw Linowitz. The Milton Berle collection, the second time around, is available from Kodak. And you can call 1-800-331-6839. It is easily the best forty nine ninety five value in America. Silver Spring, Maryland. Hello. Hello. This is uh, Uncle Milty. This is he. How are you? Oh, pleasure to talk to you. I've been trying to reach you for about uh, almost a year. Yeah? Uh, I've been uh, wanting to find out about whatever happened to Harry and Martha. On your own. Oh, you're talking the radio program that Larry King liked. Harry and Martha. Oh, yeah, you know, when she used to say, yeah. That, was, <laughs> that the one? That was Pert Kelton. Pert Kelton. Yes. And uh, that was, uh, she, she passed away. Yeah. One of the great comedians of all time. Incidentally, Pert Kelton is on, this is on the tape, too. She's so funny. She, we have Francia Tone in the three the of us. And she comes, she comes out from the audience uh, for an autograph, and I say, please, don't do that. And don't. And she I can't wait to see this. Omaha, Nebraska, for Milton Burrow. Hello. Hello. Uh, Mr. Burrow, I'd like to ask you to respond to uh, a comment you made on television once regarding Colonel Tom Parker. And yes, sir. You had some difficulties with him. Would you elaborate on that? I had difficulties with him. Well, I'll tell you, he, uh, before, before he handled Elvis Presley... He used to put on a, a, a caravan, uh, a one-nighter, 
and none of us got paid. I remember that. That was many, many years ago. But I never had any trouble with Colonel Tom Parker. He was my very best friend. In fact, he was the one that wanted me to start Elvis, and I put Elvis on for the first time. So I, I don't know where you heard that. No, not true. Uh, Chicago for Milton Berle. Hello. Yes, good evening, uh, Mr. King, Mr. Hi. Berle. Good evening. I'm one of those people that collects 78 RPM recordings of vaudevillians. Mm -hmm. I know. And uh, you are one of them. Well, what have you got, sir? Oh, well, I have a couple. Mostly I've so far found a couple of 78s that you did for R.C. Victor in the late 40s. Oh, that was the uh, that was where I did Rogers and Hart? Is that it? That's one of them. Also, you did a couple of uh, pro, uh, recordings or a couple of songs that you did on the air, such as I'll Kill You a Million Times. Yeah. I'll Kill You a Million Times. One of the biggest hits sold three copies. <laughs> My question is this. Do yes, sir. You, or do you know of anyone who kept track of what and when as far as the recordings? No. I have some of them home in my files in the archives, uh -huh. but I don't know of anyone. I'm sorry. I, I wish uh, I could help you. There's just one place for me near you. Charleston, West Virginia. My Hello. favorite town. Hello. How did you get the name Uncle Milty? Or, I mean, Mr. Television, Uncle Milty. Which, yeah. what, what which name came you, first? Which How came did Uncle first? Milty come? Well, that's a long story now. It's going to take too long for that. Okay. But, uh, uh, you know, you in those days, in the 49s and 50s, uh, you weren't allowed to speak personally uh, over the air or, or on television uh, to, the, uh, to any person. You couldn't right. say Charlie or Joe. So uh, after Tuesday night shows the next morning... I would walk along the street, and somebody would say, uh, my child uh, won't go to sleep because he watches you. Uh, You've got to get the kids to sleep. So, do, can you do something about it? And I said, I don't know what I can do. i just maybe ad-lib something. So, um, one night uh, on, on the second year, the time, we had eight more minutes to go, and we were through with the show already. So, I had a guy underneath the camera... Uh, putting a sign said meaning stretch it stretch and the guy under the camera by the way was Arthur Penn one of the great directors <laughs> and uh, so I started to ad lib and I thought I did about three minutes and he held his hand up again he says five more minutes to go I said five more minutes to go or I didn't know what to say so I remembered some jokes that I did in Charleston or wherever it was and then all of a sudden I got a thought I said look uh, um, a lot of people meet me on the street, and I told the story about, can you tell the children to go to sleep? So I said, you know, after 9 o'clock, there isn't any more television, kiddies. <laughs> and uh, so I, I didn't want to say, so listen to Milton or listen to Mr. Burl. I said, so listen to your, to your Uncle Milty, and I, I just said it as a phrase. The next day, I went up to Boston. Uh, for a Catholic benefit for Father Gorman, and they gave me an open parade on the street sitting on a car, and uh, two hard hats were digging up the road, and as I passed them, one of them said, oh, they, were, they were in their 30s or 40s, one of them said, Hi, Uncle Milty! And I went, Uh-uh, uh-uh. And the wheels in the brain started to work. I said, That's what I'm going to use from now on, Uncle Milty. And then I wrote the safety songs for the kids. Yeah, That's how it worked. Uncle Milty. <laughs> Denver, Colorado, with Milton Burrow. Hello. Hello, Uncle Milty. Hello, my friend. Uh, can you verify this for me? This is about your career. Were you the baby in the buggy with Marie Dressler and Charlie Chaplin in Tilly's Punctured Romance? No, uh, I wasn't the baby in the buggy. I was the little boy at the beginning of the picture. I was uh, six years old. I was the boy that Chaplin when he was coming down as the little tramp who had no money, of course, I was selling newspapers, and he bought them all from me. That out, because that's what I read, and... That's true. Wrote that story never got it right. Well, well so you were the little boy selling newspapers? Yeah, until he's punctured romance. That was the name of the picture. Wow. Brighton, Massachusetts. Hello. Hi. Ah, Milton. Yeah. Okay, Milton, I got something I got to talk about that goes back many years. No one ever brings up that you were one of the first on telethons for the cancer fund. That's true. Correct. I never hear them bringing up it up. Do they ever do it? I don't know. I remember that. You did it before Jerry Lewis did telethons. Oh, boy, this was done in 1949. To be exact, it was in May. And it was for the Damon 
Runyon Cancer Fund. I was right. on for 24 hours. You remember that? That would sir? be 40 years ago. And you know who did the invocation? May he rest in peace. His Excellency Bishop Fulton Sheen, one of the great men of all time. Who went right. on against you. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I got to bring up something about that. Yes, sir. I remember sir. you interviewed Bernie Baruch on the television. That's right. He said, and I thought he's going to give a big donation. And you know what he said to you? What? Look, as long as I'm on, I'll give you a, a, a dollar for every second I'm on. And he, he only gave $120. I think you interviewed him for two minutes. <laughs> yeah, but he also gave me some good advice on the stock market. So that, that made it <laughs> worthwhile. Our guest is Milton Berle. Again, this uh, great tape, the second time around. What can one say about Tuesday nights in America 40 years ago? 1-800-331-6839 is the uh, toll-free number. 1-800-331-6839. That's the Kodak video people in Rochester. Back after these messages. With the great Milton Burrow, Longmeadow, Massachusetts. Hello. Hello, Mr. King. Yes. And Mr. Burrow. Yes. I give great tribute to having you be, uh, being on the air today. And again, I wish it was the 11th as it was Irving Berlin's 101th birthday. Thank you very, very much. And right, 101. Irving Berlin is 101. 101. And I was the only one who put it on the air other than the mutual broadcasting system. That's today. Today's the 11th, right? Well, it's past. It's the 12th now. It's now the 12th, yeah. yeah. So. Do you know that uh, Irving Berlin outlived his own copyright <laughs> uh, on Alexander's Ragtime Band? I have one of the largest archive. Uh, libraries in the country and an orchestra in honor of all you people in show business. Well, thank you very much. And I also would like to say that nothing could ever have been said enough for Lucille Ball. Oh, she was a darling. Oh, boy. Greatest comedian in the world. Los Angeles with Milton Berle. Hello. Good evening, Mr. King. Hi. And Mr. Burrell, I am so happy to have a chance to talk to you. Back in the 60s, uh, you were doing a show at ABC. Right. And there was talk that you were going to do a feature film, and I had a chance to read the script when the girls from your office gave it to me. I shall always remember the title, The Day the Clown Cried. That's right, The oh, Day the no, Clown Cried. you would get an Oscar for that. Whatever happened? Well, um, I was too busy with the series, and I couldn't spare the time. And I think uh, Jerry Lewis uh, took the script. And uh, they never finished the picture. You won an Emmy, didn't, didn't you? Well, I was up for a nomination for Doyle serious? Against the House. Doyle Against the House. I played the dealer. And another movie you were great in, the Oscar. Thank you very much. The picture was not that very good. The picture good. was not very good, but you well, were thank you very superior much. as the agent. I was up for a uh, supporting actor role. I was down here in Washington just oh, a few years ago, and I made a picture they showed on public uh, television called Family Business. Did yeah, you I see remember. it? Terrific. And uh, you were here for that. That was all, all dramatic parts. Miami, hello. Yes, I have a question for Milton Burrow. Mr. Burrow, from what I understand from reading the tabloids, as a result of the death of your wife, holiness. <laughs> have a good time, sir. Ramsey, New Jersey, hello. Milton Burrow, in uh, the early days of television, uh, who caught you the most uh, flat-footed? Who, in, who ambushed you? Uh, who got the belly laugh on you? Oh, well, that's the way it was uh, set up for me, to, to, for me to be the... Uh, uh, but of the joke, like the beloved Jack Benny, you know what I mean? You no. two had that wonderful thing going, you and Benny. Oh, boy. Never, the, the, what, what great, great comedy that era produced. Well, we, we, you can't imagine what we Well, somebody had. asked me today, uh, why aren't there any more variety shows? Like uh, my show, or Sullivan show, or your show of shows. Uh, the money won't let it be. Carol Burnett was the last, right? Yes, ma'am. Rochester, New York. Hello. I was calling to see how your wife was doing and how many years you were married to her. Oh, I was Ruthie married. Ruthie passed away uh, just two week, weeks ago. Yeah, just two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. I was married, married 38 years. Yeah. She Sterling. was some woman. She sure was. Sterling, New York. Hello. Yes, I'd like to know about two people, and I'll hang up and listen. One's from the radio show, a man named Frank Gallup. Yes, sir. Around and what, what do you know about him? Well, Frank is still working. He's still announcing. One of the great uh, announcers of oh, all time. Frank Burl. Burl? Yes. I uh, say yes, Mr. Gallup. Burl? And who's the other one? The second man was the man I remember hitting you with the powder puff and calling you cheap, 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 Arnold Stang. Yes, sir. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Well, Arnold Stang, by the way, if you get this uh, tape, 
that we're talking about is in there quite often, and is he funny? Oh, was he funny. Cleveland, hello. Yes, um, Uncle. What Uncle King. The time you were you played in Cleveland, and what are your impressions of Cleveland now? What is my what? Did you play Cleveland? Did, did I just play recently Cleveland played play? Cleveland. I just recently played Cleveland at the uh, rehabilitated uh, Palace Theater with Danny Thomas, Phil Sil- uh, Phil Sil- may he rest in peace, uh, Sid uh, Caesar, and myself. The and three of you do an act together. Oh huh? yeah, we're working together now. It's just terrific. now. How does it work? Who comes out? Well, ah, that's the trick. The three individual personalities, three different styles. Uh, Larry. Right. And it was quite difficult. See, we made the picture together, side by side, which was quite successful movie of the week. And we decided, what the heck, let's, I, 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 I've never done it before, let's uh, team up and do some concerts. Now, the whole trick was to really get these three together that they wouldn't clash. And it was quite difficult, because uh, so Danny, I, well, Danny Thomas, one of the great storytellers, Sid Caesar's one of the great pantomime and sketch, sketch artists, right. and I'm uh, a Milton, you know, with the, these are the jokes, folks. And uh, So who comes out first? The three of us. And we all work together. Do and we all way? Not all way. No, S- uh, Sid does his spots. Uh, uh, Danny does his spot. I have my spot. Then we do three spots together. We close the show. We open the show and close the show. It's really a very wonderful unit. Jacksonville, Florida. Hello. Hello? Next number. Next number. Milton Berle's our guest. The number, again, for the second time around, that's a three-part tape. There are three tapes on the video uh, from uh, the, the Texaco the days. Texaco days. <laughs> uh, 1-800-331-6839 is the toll-free number. Toronto, Canada. Hello. Yes, hello. Milton Berle? Right. Yes, I'd like to ask you... Um, in your early in the early days of uh, live TV back in the early fifties, do you remember a, a broadcaster named Jim Hawthorne who resembled Steve Allen? I should say I do. And could you give me any recollections of Jim Hawthorne and his career? As you know, he went to Denver and became involved in radio. Or, I, I, uh, I I don't remember what he did, but I remember him very well because I used to see him backstage at Rockefeller Plaza all the time while we were doing the show live television. Yep. What an event those were all Well, those. in those days, uh, hey. Larry, you got what you saw, and you saw what you got. Uh, you didn't get a second chance. You sure did. You had to be right the first time. And all of that vaudeville training behind all the people that I had on the show, uh, the stars or the, the non-stars, the featured players, all had experiences in Broadway shows working to live audiences. And uh, they asked me, Milton, didn't you think you were taking a risk at that time? Well, at that time, I didn't think I was taking a risk. Because prior to that, I was playing all the vaudeville circuits to a live audience every show. So I didn't worry about the cameras. Milton Burrow's our guest. Uh, we have a few moments remaining. We'll get to a few more calls. And we'll be repeating the phone number where you can get uh, the second time around the three-part tape from uh, Kodak of Milton Burrow's Texaco Star Theater. That was the name of that show. The Texaco... It was never the Milton Berle show. Well, no. It was was the the Texaco Star Theater starring Milton Berle. That's right. I remember. Or starving Milton Berle. Starving Milton Who did it in the summer? Uh, What did they do Tuesday night in the summer? uh, In the summer and Tuesday night, I think we were replaced... Uh, by a, a substitute. Just summer, oh, we just did 39 straight weeks. Because Gleason, I remember he took off Dorsey. Tommy Dorsey did the Jackie Gleason summer show. That was right. That was on Dumont. That's on right. Channel but 5. you didn't have a, there wasn't no, a no, Texaco no, stuff. No, there was, there was a replacement. You did 39 live weeks and then a replacement. <laughs> Every show. We'll Every be back. Here, I mean. We'll be back after these messages. North Valley Stream, Long Island, New York. Uh, hold on. North Valley Stream, Long Island, New York. Hello. How are you doing, Milty? I'm doing fine, sir. Yeah, Thank you. Question. Somebody had mentioned it previously uh, about Arnold Stang. Uh, I went to New Utrecht High School with him in the mid-40s. Right. Uh, was that his first uh, job in te- television with you? No, I don't think so. He was on radio. Yeah, he did. He, yeah, he, he was did. He did terrific right. on radio. Port Ritchie, Florida. Hello. Uncle Milky. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was the worst person in the world. All my in-laws thought... Because I bought a television set and I'm wasting his money. But where were they every Tuesday night? Right. Your house. 
right. With, with guests. Yeah, so they had to bring a case of beer along so they'd have some place to sit. Well, good. Well, you'll be able to see them. Yeah, though you oh boy, are people gonna love these tapes. This this is gonna be a major seller. Los Angeles, hello. Los Angeles, hello. My town and they don't answer? Are you there? No. Okay, I don't understand this. West Hartford, Connecticut, hello. Hello. Uh who played the part of Fatso Marco on the Uncle Mildy and Donald Duck record? On the Donald Duck record? Yeah, Uncle Mildy and Donald Duck. Oh yes. I think it was Fatso. Well, well, what was his... Was that his name, Fatso Marco? That was his name, mm -hmm. not in the record, not a, as the character. Chris he, tells me you were in a heavy metal disco, uh, a heavy metal that's video. That's true, that's true. My nephew, Marshall Burl, uh, is, has, it, is it has, heavy metal? No, no, he, he's the owner and the manager. It's a corporation with the... the uh, that heavy metal group called Rat, R-A-T-T. -T. Oh, Is that were, the one he means? Yeah, and you were in the video. Yeah, huh? he asked me to do the video with him. <laughs> Bethesda, Maryland, hello. Uh, Mr. Milton Burrow? Right, sir. Uh, yes, uh, yes, sir. I don't think 8 o'clock uh, Tuesday nights will ever be the same. Uh, yes, they will. Uh, you can call people into your house now at 8 o'clock and, and tell them you're going to have video. a Burl Festival or a Texco Festival, and you'll see the same thing again. Uh, I'm going to watch it. Your timing and your enthusiasm uh, were, were uh, you know, uh, really the best, uh, uh, Mr. Burl. Your, your delivery. Thank you very much. Um, also, uh, didn't uh, I was reading a book one time about 10 or 15 years ago. Weren't you, well, I don't know how to put this lightly, uh, didn't you get to know Marilyn Monroe? Uh, yes. I... Uh, used to date Marilyn Monroe. Uh, that was between divorces. It was in 1950. And uh, Marilyn was some wonderful girl. Boy. Wonderful girl. Really, she was regular and she was terrific. And a good yes, light comedian. Oh, oh yeah. she was pretty sharp. Paul Myra, Pennsylvania. Hello. Hi, uh, Milton Burrow. Right, sir. I uh, love you so much. It's just unbelievable. Well, thank you very much. The question sir. is, did you enjoy doing your video with Rat? And yes, I did. Rock groups today. Yes, I did because uh, I played two parts. If you remember, I was in, dressed in drag, and I was my date. <laughs> I was dressed in a tuxedo, and we shot it two ways when we couldn't stand the party, and we left. Is that what one you yeah, mean? That's the one. Washington with Milton Burrow. Hello. Okay, we have time to get in uh, one more call for Uncle Milty, and then we'll be repeating this uh, phone number for you. To obtain the second time around. Austin, Texas. Hello. Austin, Texas. I was just wondering if Uncle Milty have ever had the chance to enjoy uh, mixed up with drugs. Me? Yeah, what was the... They, they weren't drugs in your days, right? What Aspirin. That's the drug. Aspirin. That's, uh, no, <laughs> a I don't A lot of liquor oh, drinking. You, you, are you mean... Do you mean myself yeah. or that era? I, I suppose that era. In those days, there were drugs, too. Where we had Wallace Reed and Jack Pickford and... They were mixed up in drugs. Myself? No, no. I, 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 never, I don't even smoke cigarettes. There was marijuana around a lot. Yeah, anyway. but I had never smoked marijuana. I knew marijuana very well, but I never smoked it. Why, Milty? I know we, we've joked about this a lot when I say well, you don't need the money. Retire to what, you say? Do you still get a big kick getting on a stage? I mean, is that still... No, I do. I do, I do Larry, because... Uh, hey... I know of nothing else, you know, but uh, entertaining people or being an actor and uh, trying to make people laugh. And I guess when that spotlight hits me and I hear the applause and I hear a laugh, the adrenaline starts to come up in me. And, I mean, I'm going to be 81. I, I said that to George Burns. Uh, hey, George, it's time to retire. Or when are you going to? And he said, what? To what? Uh, right? To what? Well, that's the same with me. I don't know what I'm going to retire. No, I'm never going to retire, Larry. I, 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 not that I owe the world this, but I owe myself this because I seem to be very, very happy when I make people happy. Yeah. You, you like, the happiest you are is when people are laughing, right? That's the Abs happiest you are. When I can make them laugh yeah. and I can give them a few moments away from their everyday stress... Huh. As Norman Cousins wrote about yeah. laughter, uh, that it helps you with stress. Boy. That's the whole... You've done it. Thank you, Milty. God bless you. God bless you. Uncle Milton Burrell, the second time around. It's a three-part tape. There are three tapes in one, all packaged together in a collector series from Kodak Video Programs for forty-nine ninety-five. It's the Texaco Star Theater, 
Tuesday night American television, late 40s, early 50s. Uh, and if you'd like uh, to order it, you can do so by phone 1-800-331-6839 or at your video store. Or by writing Kodak Video Programs, Rochester, New York. If you missed any part of these two hours with Oral Hershiser and Milton Burl, they'll be repeated one hour from now on most stations. And our new station this week is WCKY AM 1530 in Cincinnati, Ohio. This is the Larry King Show in Washington. Tomorrow night, Saul Linowitz, and we'll talk about the Panama Canal Treaty. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.